Now, I originally had this whole premise where I wanted to write an article about Chon, and, I, and I'm still going to do this. I wanted to write an article on how, like, they have somehow managed to, like, game the system, right? So Chon can basically tour with any band virtually. Like, um, they can, um, they can tour. I, I've seen them tour with bands like, um, Between the Buried and Me, and then, like, Animals as Leaders. I mean, I could see them touring with, like, Meshuga, right? Um, I could see them touring with, like, they can, uh, Contortionist. Their last tour was with Intervals, Between the Buried and Me, and Sean. You know, Sean out of those two bands, they're, like, bubbly and, and clean and very, like, they have, like, elements of hip-hop now and, like, all sorts of stuff. Intervals, they, you know, their older stuff was heavier, so you can kind of see how that would work with Between the Buried and Me. But, nonetheless, it's like, okay, Chon, Between the Buried and Me, they did Fuji Rock, which was like a giant festival, which granted those festivals, there's always weird, a mix of all sorts of bands. But yeah, like bands like Jason Mraz, The Cure, Death Cat for Cutie, James Blake, Chemical Brothers, Cake, right? Uh, re re res uh, Resonance 2019. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it looks like Chon was headlining. Yeah, Joe Hurtler and the Rainbow Seekers, Erethem, Goose, Polish Ambassadors. All this shit. Then you had like Chon with Domi and JD Beck, who I don't even know who the fuck those are. Shaky Knees Festival. You had Tame Impala, Beck, Cage the Elephant, Incubus, Tears for Fears, right? Um. Let's keep going. Uh, they did Coachella, was Khalifa, Ariana Grande, Kid Cudi, you know, right? But Coachella, like everyone goes, every every like, it's a hodgepodge of stuff. Then you have like Chan with Light and Go Yama, which might be more more fair. But then like Chan and Coheed and Cambria, right? Like okay, that's that's a little strange. Um, Chan and Polyphia, uh, you know, they're boys, Super Chan Bros. Yeah, that was a. Uh, I think that whole tour sold out, like every single tour. Okay, like thrice, Circus Survive, Chon, Balance and Composure. You know, like what? The Fall of Troy, Hail the Sun, Chon. Yeah. You know, like, dude, they've been they've been busy. Little Tybee, Terra Melos, Covet, Covet, Chon. That's like a more that tour or string of shows, whatever they're doing there. That's more like, okay, like all the bands kind of fit in the same spectrum, I guess, right? They're all kind of that same thing. Then you have like stuff like Dance Gavin Dance with Idola, Chon, and Polyphia. Dance Gavin Dance is kind of like a weird one, but it kind of works. Dance Gavin Dance has that Fall of Troy kind of post-hardcore thing. <clears throat> I'm trying to find one that's, oh, okay, like Periphery, Sixth, Chon, Tooth Grinder. Right, like Chon, <laughs> that's the like if you've listened to Periphery or Sixth or Tooth Grinder, those are all like these bands are heavy as fuck, and Chon is like the opposite of that. Chon Polyphia, Strawberry Girls tour, that one makes sense. But yeah, dude, fucking Chon Periphery, Sixth and Tooth Grinder, the Deer Hunter, Chon and Gates, like that's another like one's kind of strange, right? So like, dude, they they can tour with all just about anyone yeah fucking animals as leaders conquering dystopia and Chon. conquering dystopia is like this fucking like technical death metal instrumental band between jeff loomis and keith marrow animals as leaders is just like eight string proggy heavy chugs tosin and stuff and then Chon. that's like that's actually a good mix of like different just very different styles but like <laughs> Chon after the burial animals as leaders right but you get the idea. Like, dude, these guys can go on and just play with, like, any band. They have somehow managed to, like, game the system and just, just, it works for them. Like, dude, if you listen to their music, you wouldn't listen to After the Burial and then listen to Chon and be like, oh, they, these, okay. But, but it's weird how, like, a lot of Chon fans will listen to After the Burial. A lot of After the Burial fans might not listen to Chon. <clears throat> it's strange, but good, good for them for that. Good for them for that, which brings me to my next thing, and that's on how they got screwed by Sumerian Records. Okay, so if you haven't seen, um, 
there was a podcast done by Ando San. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Great guy. He's a uh, plays eight string guitar, funky jazz, blue, whatever. So they did a podcast with the session drummer for Chon. Now I actually don't know what's going on in the Chon camp because like they have a drummer and they have like a full band, but like this guy was talking as like the session drummer for when they're like recording music. So like, I don't, I thought you guys have a drummer. What's, what's going on with all that? I don't know. I'll, I'll look into that maybe. But so basically this guy is saying that Sean, the members of the band don't even know if they're going to tour anymore, like work on a new album because they're completely screwed on their deal. They, they signed with Sumerian when they were really young. I'm guessing they probably signed like a five or six album deal maybe. And I don't know if there's like a time frame when the the contract would expire and they're just kind of waiting it out. But the guy basically said like when Chon tours, they don't make any money on merch. And if you know Chon, like the fan base for Chon is absolutely ridiculous. I love Chon. I, I have bought some of their CDs. I know their fan base though, like super diehard. Like they, they make a, I imagine they make a killing from merch sales and they're, they're the kind of band, dude, they could totally collab with a bunch of other people. They could do like an Adidas thing, right? They could, whatever, champion, pick a clothing brand. So anyway, the, they're basically butt fucked on their deal. They make no money from some merch sales. They're, they'd like, they should be millionaires and they're not right. They still live in apartments and whatever and according to the session drummer even like the way their deal worked i don't this part didn't make sense to me but he was saying how like he, for all of the sessions he's done with chon he should be paid you know like x amount of like hundreds of thousands of dollars like a hundred thousand dollars something like that. That, that that's what the the session drummer guy said i i pardon me for i forget your name sir i apologize i i kind of watched the video quick and i was like oh this is i'm gonna remember some of this and talk about it but anyway, yeah, so um, that, that, that just sucks, right? Like, of course, like if if Chon is basically like because because I get why they signed a record label back then. And now, grant out, I'm speaking like seven years ago or yeah, probably probably like seven ish years ago. And like what we know now with bands like Intervals. Pliny, C2A, David Max and Meat Neil, all Nick Johnston. It's like these instrumental guitar guys. You don't need a label to be successful. Now, granted, maybe the push that Sumerian Records has had on Sean would have, you know, they, they have pushed them farther than they would have gone alone. But it's hard to imagine, like, I don't know, man, like the venues that they're playing now, like, he would have still been playing at those venues and maybe maybe they're not playing at that venue but like dude they're, they'd still be killing it with merch and they'd be making all the money instead of giving it to the fucking label so maybe they, they wouldn't be as big but the, <laughs> i can it it's not ridiculous to think that they maybe make like tenfold what they're making now if they're, apparently they're not making anything right like dude they, man it's such a bummer. It's such a shame to see a band that talented, that unique and cool being abused and, and taken advantage of. And now it's just like, dude, what do we, I mean, I hope for the best the guy, the, the guy that was interviewed talked about how, um, all the members are doing like their own solo, like electronic stuff. And I think that's like a loophole from the contract. And they're going to do that until the contract expires. Something like that. I don't know. Talking about how like uh, Mario's going to be doing or Eric or one of them will be doing like some kind of electronic stuff, release it as their own. So it's not Chon. So the label won't be able to get their grubby hands on any income that makes. But yeah, no, it's just uh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Because I, ma I imagine like, yeah, they would be just as big if them okay maybe they wouldn't be as big that's definitely true they wouldn't be as big as they are now maybe would they be bigger probably not you know maybe they'd be just as big but then it's just like it's all kind of a little relative too though like okay how big would they well like this 
They could they could be they could have half of the fan base they have now if they are independent and making a hundred percent of all their sales. They're still making a fuck ton more than they are now, right? Like, <laughs> come on, man. So, I don't know. It is what it is. It's a bummer. I'm like bummed about it. Bummed to hear, um, all the un- all the unfortunate stuff going on with that. I hope for the best. I hope. I hope we see more Chon because they they put out an album in like 2019, I think. Granted, the pandemic has really screwed stuff up. So um, I don't know if that has a role in anything, but I don't know. I want to see more Chon. I feel like a lot of people want to see more Chon. So this is it. This is all you're going to get. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to my podcast, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my website, georgimatviv.com. Sign up for my mailing list. I won't be, you know, sending you bad shit. I just, you know, sending you cool stuff. I'll be doing like lessons and stuff soon. But yeah, dude, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. And yeah, until then, I'll see you next time. So bye bye.